right so this is the 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 start of the third section of this lecture uh, that's still again uh, discussing about the um, the aspects of human personality or psyche and this is the sixth uh, system in our psyche that we call complexes yeah so a complex is a core or pattern in our emotion and behavior or in mem our memories, perception, in how we make sense of our world. And we organize in one common theme that defines the, the, the whole personality. So, for example, if someone uh, makes power as their, their central theme of personality, it means that their behavior, their perception, their, their memories would circling around this, uh, this central theme. And in that point, this theme would influence their behavior. So their behavior would would basically a manifestation of these complexes. So, for example, if someone would uh, would uh, use a would use a power or status as their common theme of their own personality, they might running an office, running for an office, for example, or might it, or it could be they would. I don't know. Maybe they they partic they participate in a race just to make sure that they would gain the status or they would gain the power, or they might chase to be the smartest person in the class and being very ambitious about their academic life. So that would be the idea of complexes. Uh, the sec uh, the seventh part, the seventh system in our psyche would be, I think the most interesting part and the most peculiar one. So um, I would say that this is a part, uh, this part is extremely influenced by our collective unconsciousness. So that's why it is very strange. It's a very odd concept actually, but very interesting one. So um, in our collective unconsciousness, it is manifested into different, um, into different archetypes or what Jung also called as a primordial images of a human personality. So basically, this is the content, the content of, the content of, uh, of our collective unconsciousness that we inherited it from our ancestor. So archetypes, there are four different archetypes. And if you are a K-pop lover, for example, uh, I don't know whether you are a K-pop lover. Uh, just recently, a Korean uh, boy band, as I remember, it's BTS. Uh, they use this theme as their uh, as their album, uh, as their theme of the of their newest album, if not if I'm not mistaken. And it is very popular in Indonesia, and people are crazy about it, and people talk about these archetypes a lot, whether or not this is true. Again, there is no scientific evidence to falsify or to prove the existence of these archetypes. <laughs> right, so the first archetypes is the persona, or the masks, yeah? So we use this to reveal, not to reveal, to, un to, uh, to cover our true self that we are reluctant or his assistant to make it public. So th this is the way we present ourselves in the public. And, but this is completely different from where, from uh, who we actually are. Um, and again, it is helpful for us because it helps us to navigate our social interaction. Because this is something is a, it's a part of our personality that we choose to make it public. But again, this is not our true personality. And thinking that the masks is our true self could be dangerous and harmful. And it would give the per the persona uh, an, a, a disproportionate attention, the disproportionate power that it to influence our psyche. Again, the healthy personality in Jung system is the balance of all aspects of the system. So it doesn't make sense that one system interfere or have so much power than other system. So if you give the persona more energy, more dominant powers. Uh, or complete even complete takeover of your personality that would be extremely dangerous uh, and and it will lead to a condition that Jung called the inflation of persona and it will of course it will lead to mental disturbance 
And the second archetypes, this is the quite strange one. Um, so it's ba it, it basically uh, basis it based on the idea that human is basically bisexual. So there is a conscious, uh, there is a unconscious wishes, unconscious desire uh, to be a woman, to be a woman in a man. So it's the masculine aspects. Uh, this is the feminine aspects of a man that we call the anima archetype. And there is also a masculine sides of a woman that we call an animus. So this is also provide you with an explanation why sometimes uh, a woman could do perhaps a very typical man's job, masculine jobs, without their, uh, without uh, under the unconscious, under under the conscious, uh, under the under their conscience. Um, for example, uh, a woman would be kind of surprised that they would do better uh, in fixing the roof, for example. It's a very typical masculine job, but women can do it. And then the explanation would be, she is influenced by their animus, the masculine side of a woman. And Jung says that um, healthy personality should embrace both aspects of this um, sexes, both typical, uh, both um, um, both types, uh, both characteristic of uh, both sexes. And even though the original uh, the original sexes would influence the personality um, more than the unconscious. Uh, than the than the archetypes, but again, Jung uh, basically emphasized that in order to reach healthy personality, those two aspects or those two characteristics from both sexes should be embraced. Yeah, should be embraced. And maybe you would, you may have heard the idea of yin and yang. So basically, it's a unity, is an harmony. Uh, harmonious processes, harmonious integration between two opposing, uh, two opposing sides and two opposing um, drives. So basically, this is the core theme of Jung, uh, of Jung system. Um, so there is a one sexes and one sex, and there is also a contrary, uh, uh, unconscious uh, desire to be uh, another sex. So um, it possess the idea, it would reflect the idea of paradox and harmony at the same time, which is quite beautiful. But again, there is no scientific evidence that could falsify or prove this theory. And the second, uh, the third one, yeah, the third archetypes is the shadow. And this is the, of course, uh, very, uh, it's, it, it reflects from how Jung give name, gave name to these uh, archetypes is that the dark, the darker side of a human, uh, of human parts, a uh, human personality, and it reflects the idea of, of um, the uh, bees side of a human, not bass, but bees, yeah, bees side of a human, and even though this is something that we don't want, we repress it into our unconscious processes, and even though it is sinister and is it is quite mysterious, and possess the idea of basic and primitive animal instincts of a human, it is actually a source of vitality and it is also a source of spontaneity and it gives us creativity and also emotion. So even though this is something that is unwanted, but we need to take it to take account of this uh, archetypes in order to be more, you know, to be more creative, to, to feel emotion. So Again, this is a very beautiful contradiction, yeah? So even though it's mysterious, yeah, it, it possesses the idea that the worst side of a human, uh, it, might, it might involve the idea of sadism, aggressive ag aggression, uh, and conquer, and maybe destruct destruction. But again, it would give us a creativity and emotion at the same time. Yeah, so we need to embrace this, but properly control the negative part of it. And the last archetypes, that is the selves, the self, no, sorry, not the selves, but the self, 
It represents the idea of integration of the whole system of our personality and the harmony uh, between those com uh, opposing and contradictory elements of our personality. So it's this is the the true selves that um, that is a combination that's an, an integration and assimilation of different system in our personality. So we will form this healthy self by bringing together every system in our personality uh, proportionately. And it's also a midway between the conscious and unconscious processes. So unlike ego, yeah, ego is completely in the conscious processes, but the real self is actually a midway between conscious and unconscious process of human personality. So even though those different systems, seven different systems of our personality, it's actually, um, there is a map that visualizes the integration of those seven systems in our personality. So this is the map. Uh, on our psyche. So as we see in here, yeah, there is a collective unconsciousness that basically the um, the accumulation of our primal uh, primal uh, content of our of our human personality, and it's largely and uh, predominantly unconscious. But there is also a person personal conscious part that reflects the sub the subconscious yeah so it's a it's a middle part that connects the conscious world and also the collective conscious unconscious yeah so as we see in here our ego is largely conscious and our persona is basically basically more conscious because this this is the this is the part of our personality that we choose to see to the public but again this is not the real personality and deep in uh, deep into our unco uh, deep into our collective unconscious there is a shadow yeah and animus and anima as the archetypes and again in order to make a unity and harmony within this seven system then we need to integrate it into the self which is the midway between conscious the conscious process here upward and also the collective unconsciousness the unconscious unconsciousness part are deep down in our personality so this is the idea of how uh, Jung uh, map or visualize the system completely different system in our personality so that would be the the end of of the third part of this lecture and I will back with the fifth part and the last part of this lecture